So let's do that, okay? And so we're going to take advantage of this property of the Hermite polynomials, okay? So let's see, and I'm going to write this just as um, it was written in the book where I'm writing like sine nu of x equals n sub nu times h nu of y e to the negative y squared divided by 2 um, and write x equals alpha times y. Okay, and we know the alpha is that big collection of constants. Okay, so now we have this thing put together already, right? And so we know to normalize this function, it's going to be given as 1 equals, write this normalization constant squared. Um, and in this case, by our boundary conditions, we integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity, right? The large displacement. You can see I've got that picture right there. Okay. Um, and that's going to be, uh, right, psi star psi dx, right, to do the normalization constant, okay? And so now if we keep going here, okay, because we know that if we have x equals alpha times y, then dx has to equal alpha times dy. So we have to keep track of that coordinate transformation, or really just using a different letter, all right? So now if I plug all of that in and knowing the form of our psi, right, of our wave function, Okay, we know alpha is a constant, so that's going to come out in front. So I'm going to replace this dx with alpha dy, okay? So now that's alpha. We know the normalization constant stays in front of the integrand, okay? Um, and so now let's see, I still integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? And then now I know that my the rest of my wave function is going to be the Hermite polynomial times this e to the negative y squared divided by 2 function, all right? Well, when I, when I do that, right, I'm squaring it, psi star times psi, and there's no imaginary numbers in there, um, then what I get is something that looks like this, h nu of y times h nu of y, and then, of course, we square the e to the negative y squared divided by 2, which just becomes e to the negative y squared dy. And then now check it out. This is pretty cool. We actually have a guide for how to solve this. Look at this. h nu prime times h nu times e to the negative y squared dy equals 0 if y prime cannot equal, or excuse me, if, if nu prime and nu are different states. It equals zero, orthogonal wave functions, that makes sense. But look, if nu prime and nu are the same, as in the case of trying to normalize this, then we get a fairly straightforward solution for this thing, okay? And so now that means all of this is one equals, and I still have this alpha times normalization constant squared out in front, but now this whole integral is just going to become uh, the square root of pi Time, let's, uh, sorry, I'm going to make myself a little bit more space. So uh, we know that it's 1 equals alpha times that normalization constant times pi to the 1 half, so I'll just write that as square root of pi, times 2 raised to the new power times new factorial. Don't forget about factorials, okay? Um, and so now I just have to al algebraically rearrange this for the normalization constant. Um, and when we do that, we get the following. 1 over alpha, um, I guess I will write pi to the 1 half because I've got that um, square root right there. I'm going to have a square root of a square root. Um, times 2 nu times nu factorial all square root. Okay, So this becomes our normalization constant. Um, and what's important to note, it contains that alpha term, okay, which gives us our displacement scale.